So my time at the old estate lake was, at least for the moment, drawing to a close because despite enjoying some really good fishing over the last few sessions, I don't feel I'd even come close to seeing, let alone catching the fish that I'd come back to target. And life's too short and there's too many other places that I need to be fishing. But before I gave up and set off for waters new, I thought I'd have one last go and see if I could at least redeem myself slightly and my trusty old Richard Walker Mark IV by targeting the mystery mirror, a fish I'd had a couple of close encounters with and it was in many ways the backup target. Now I've been giving some thought to my approach and I was quite happy sticking with the boilie and pellets in terms of bait because I felt that was working quite well. But unlike a lot of anglers who, when they start to struggle, begin to add more and more things to their rigs, I like to go the other way. I take stuff away. And initially I'd started with quite heavy leads, which was great for the bolt rig effect and the self-hooking properties of, of such things. But the issue I had was that you had to have the bait in the swim before the fish arrived and so it made it difficult to be selective so then i'd swap to smaller leads which were easier to introduce when the fish were around but they didn't have sufficient weight with them so i'd taken it back a step further again and just gone to the old link ledges which is just a link of uh, a loop of nylon with a couple of swan shot on and i'll explain the reasoning for that as we go along but I was quite encouraged to see a group of commons turn up in the swim because the swim doesn't normally hold very many fish. And I had four or five feeding in front of me, including one of the lake's bigger commons. Um, they don't run as big as the mirrors, but they're still nice fish. But I was determined not to cast out until I'd seen the mystery mirror like all the best guests she was late to the party and came wandering across a weed bed <laughs> oblivious to everything that was going on around eventually arriving at the swim now I expected it to come around the front of this weed bed so I placed the bait in such a way as it would encounter the bait before the line because you might remember in a previous video she spooked off the rig but of course, best laid plans and all that. She actually came around the back of the weed bed, <clears throat> but was feeding and heading towards the hook bait and everything I'd been working towards for the last few weeks was coming down to this few seconds. And in one magnificent move, I fluffed it completely and fell over backwards. <laughs> Not the finest moment of my angling career. But once I'd uh, regained my feet and composure, I realized that the commons were still around and they were moving back through the swim. And they were being led by the biggest of the bunch. So I put a bait out and with no pressure and no expectation, I hooked it straight away. It was like taking candy from a baby. Now I'm a big advocate for keeping pressure directly above fish when you're uh, playing them in tight swims as it disorientates them and stops them from getting their heads down and getting going. But this fish was something else. It, it just floundered. I can't remember carp fighting like this ever I don't think it, it just went round and in circles flapping its tail out of the water but because of the, the mass of it the weight of it I couldn't just draw it straight to the net it was a, it was a really odd experience and even when I thought I had the best of it, 
It still had one little trick up its sleeve and through the hook just as I <laughs> reached to net it and I missed it. But I wasn't too disheartened. It wasn't a target fish. It would have been nice to see it on the bank. But no harm, no foul. And having right royally destroyed that swim, I thought I'd go back up to the shallows and have a quick look about and see if I couldn't see the dark scaly fish, the one that had brought me back to the lake in the first place. And they introduced bait in a similar haphazard way as I've been doing. And um, it didn't take very long for a fish to start feeding. You can just see there to the right of the swim. And I instantly recognized it as a, as a fish that I've caught and one that I've seen plenty of times across my time at the lake, a fish I call the apple slice mirror. And by far and away, it's the biggest fish I'd seen in the lake up until that point. But my uh, jaw literally hit the floor when I realized that another fish was starting to feed on the left-hand side of the swim. And whilst not quite as long as the apple slice mirror, it was significantly wider and significantly deeper and probably most significant of all was busy mopping up the freebies and how I've not seen this fish I don't know very very distinctive uh, both by its bulk but also by the fact that the top lobe of its tail has a piece missing and it doesn't look like a, a recent occurrence but I've never seen sight nor sound of this fish and it's amazing what the thought of a big fish can do because I instantly forgot about the mystery mirror the lost common and even the dark scaly and thought to myself if I can get a chance on this fish and that will make all well in the world again. So I snuck into position. I wasn't fishing very far out at all. And it took the bait and the rod took on a fearsome fighting curve for any rod, but especially one that's 60 odd years old. And the really, really great thing about this is that although I hadn't gone to the lake with the intention of targeting this fish, simply because I didn't know it was there, it played out completely textbook style um, in how I envisaged this strategy working. By spreading the baits about, I kept the fish moving. It wasn't settling on a spot. Because of the presence of the apple slice, it had introduced a competitive element. So there was a sense of urgency with both of them, the way they were feeding, and they were moving very quickly from bait to bait, not stopping to examine it or worry about brushing against the line. And because I'd taken off the big leads and replaced them with just a couple of swan shot, I was able to tweak the bait out the way without disturbing the swim and make sure it was in front of the right fish at the right time and it was a monumental fight um, it doesn't translate to physio unfortunately but every time this fish's shoulders broke the surface the sun was glinting off it and it was just just one of those picture perfect moments and just <laughs> just just a great feeling when when the fish eventually hit the net and although I don't particularly fish for size, when you have to take two goes at picking them up, it's hard not to be impressed. And if I have to fail in uh, catching my target fish, this wasn't a bad consolation and a superb way of drawing to a close this autumn session 
on the old estate lake. And the great thing is, is that I've still got fish to go back for. And maybe once the weeds died down, I will. But to land a fish of that caliber, on a fantastic old rod, handcrafted in the middle part of last century. <laughs> what a way to finish. <laughs>